Okay, are you calm down so you could let me speak? Or I hang up again? 7,500, that's yeah. room for me to make 500 bucks. There's no wiggle room on that? Get the cops over here, bring them, and I'll show you. And I'll give them the right documents. Have a good day, sir. Hello, so we're on the way to Brickle City Center now to go pick up our new Mac Studio. It's our, gonna be our most expensive computer we've ever purchased and we didn't have the capability to edit. So now we do. Let's go get it. Clear, you're clear, clear, you're clear, clear, clear. Keep Finally, I've been trying to convince Dan to get a Mac, an Apple product for years to edit the video because there's a reason that people do this. We're here, I think it's the wrong Mac store. I'm just kidding. Can you guys believe that back then, prior to 2023, we used to edit and make all of our CRM Life videos with these hard drives and this old laptop? Now, thanks to Dan for our uh, Mac, and SanDisk, well, can you explain to this what this is? This is from our sponsor, SanDisk Professional. It's actually a G-Rage Shuttle 8. It has eight hard drives. It's redundant, so that means it stores our files and we don't lose any videos. And 160 terabytes, so that's the most memory I've ever seen in my life. And it actually goes 40 gigabytes per second, so super fast. It's gonna allow us to edit way more videos than ever before. I remember how many times back then, we'd be like edit a video and I shot a video with these little hard drives that we used to use back then. and. I would lose the hard drives or would forget to bring them home from, from the house and all that and it sucked, it was horrible. The videos would take 10 hours to upload. Hopefully now, we don't got that issue no more, so. Shout uh, out to Andres for his red camera. Shout out to Andres for your red camera. Let's unbox this thing. And shout out to Sandis, professional shout out for to sponsoring Sandis. us. We'll do that, we'll do that. This thing is wicked. I don't know anything about technology, but I know this thing is insane. Since I'm always forgetting things, now with the SanDisk Shuttle 8, I have memory. You think this works with the short-term memory loss? Uh, no, that has long-term memory. You have. Oh, I'm screwed. I'm you still screwed. No loss. But I don't understand, he has the serial number, so what is his issue right now? Leads Online, it's a nationwide database right. that the police has. Meaning, if you report it as stolen, guess what? They will see it already. Exactly. Okay, are you calm down so you can let me speak? Or I'll hang up again? We're gonna play? One more chance. The last time I'm gonna pick up before oh, I block you. Speak. you. Speak. Go ahead, speak. Okay, okay. When we buy watches, there is a database that the police department has that is nationwide that we have to complete by law. We have to collect driver license, all the documentation of the person selling the watch to us, including a fingerprint of the right thumb. That database goes straight to the police department at the moment we're buying the watch. As a jewelry, we have 30 days that we have that watch on hold to see if it's being reported stolen. After the 30 days, legally, by the state of Florida that protects me, thank God, I can sell my watch. Your watch got sold after the 30 days as required by the government. If, if it's the watch. I, if it's a watch. 100% of the okay, okay. okay, what caused my attention is that you reported it two years ago and that database didn't jump. Every time that I have a watch that has been stolen, which is rarely, but it's not happened, we have to hold it for 90 days. When he comes back, it's stolen. Okay, but let me ask you something. Uh -huh. That watch was the first watch that my father gave me. I understand I your pain. Watch. I'm telling you the, the proper route. Because All let right. me explain to so you. Trust me, you, I'm getting my, my, my watch back and I'm getting collector's fee. And somebody Go ahead, my love. Back. I'm telling you the proper way uh -huh. to do this is contact your police department. When you're dealing with criminals, there's no proper way of doing Listen, anything. no, no, there is a proper way. Listen, you check the serial number. I will. I will, but I will not disclose it with you. Rody, the guy that sold me the watch, been in the business for 30 years. Now, watch dealer to watch dealer, right? I send him the pictures of your watch and my watch. You guys speak to him as a watch expert. He's a watch expert. And he guaranteed that was my watch. He's a dealer, so am I. My job is to okay. do my paperwork correctly. 
And your job, I'm telling you, is to contact your police department, ask them why the heck that watch that you reported two years ago is not on the database, and why Sierra bought it, and it did not come back as stolen. Sweetheart, we are assuming that it's the same watch, but this we have no idea whether we're talking okay. about the same watch, okay? So okay, we, okay. So we saw guys... that watch, that watch that you talked about, that is on the picture, it was sold. Now, whether it was yeah. your watch or it's not your watch, we have no idea, okay? Listen, for, for us, it. it. No, I'm getting my watch back, 100%. Okay, honey, that's, that's perfect, that's great. Good luck, honey. All right, good luck to you guys. Bye-bye, you too. We're getting ready to call Steve from Secondhand Horology. He is the vintage guy that did that episode with Charlie a few weeks ago. He offered us a few pieces, and there's one particular one we're interested in to trade our Tissot for, which will be our third trade. So let's call him and see. Make it so you can see me. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right. Steve. Let me turn this up. Thanks for participating in our trade. We've been waiting to see. Yeah, absolutely. Our absolutely. For. I'm excited to be a part of it. I liked all those pieces you sent, all those vintage pieces, but we really did like the Gruen 510. I think that's the one we're going to go with. Awesome. I, I, think, I think it's a wonderful idea. I think it's going to get some attention. How can it not, right? It's really nice. Check what year did you out. say it was from? What's that? What year did you say it was from? This is from the early 1960s. So this is probably going to be a 1961 or 62. Some of these Gruens are a little hard to date. Uh, but we know that this came out in the late 50s and ran up until about 1965. Um, most of them, though, were not diamond dials. Most of them were the uh, just standard sunburst dial with just numerals at 12, 3, 6, and 9. Uh, this actually, believe it or not, was the original James Bond watch, right? So that's crazy. A lot of people don't know that, but if you do a little bit of homework, uh, you actually see the first James Bond watch was a Gruen. It happened to be just the actual actor's uh, watch, and that they went with that. Uh, so this was the original watch. Was a five a Gruen five ten. It was a standard. It was standard dial without diamonds. This is the diamond version of that watch. So this is the higher end version. Uh, so this thing is pristine. Like look at this. It's really nice. Beautiful. I like that it has a history. Too. Yeah, I mean, I think that's going to make somebody really, really happy. It's going to help. Uh, I mean, if you get you get a guy who's into some vintage, that's a hard to find piece, and I think it's going to make somebody very, very happy. So, what's really cool about the Gruens are that even though they're not um, in business anymore because they were killed during the quartz watch crisis back in the 1960s, um, you've got a great high quality watch. So yeah, it's going to make cool. somebody happy. It's got history behind it. What do you think people are going to say, or how do you think they're going to react to going from modern watches to vintage watches now? You know, I saw a lot of comments actually asking for vintage watches. So I saw on, a, on your, one of your posts, I saw people asking for vintage. And I think that, um, I think it might open the doors up for some really, really interesting trades that otherwise you would not be able to get with the Tissot. So yeah, I, I'm excited to see the reaction. I'm excited to see what people say. I'm going to send you some links on it so you get some information. And uh, I'm excited to see where this happens, Here's see where this tussle. goes. Nice. There it is. There it is. I like it. When do you That's think you'll be able watch. to bring the watch over or ship it, whatever you like? Um, I'll ship it today. Perfect. As soon as I get it, I'll go ahead and ship this out. You can send me your address too. Yeah, it's only uh, it's only 3.30, so I've got plenty of time to get this in the mail today. Thanks right, a lot. Steve. Thanks. Have a nice day. Now we got a vintage watch. Let's see where this goes. All my vintage lovers. How you doing? This is Carlos Marceline, owner of CRM Jewelers. How you doing, my brother? How's everything? I'm doing okay. I just got this uh, message from my wife that you claim that this picture that was posted in October was your watch. So you know what I did? I went back to my accounting and I told them, I want you to pull out all the sales, all the posts that we have back in October to see w the dates that we have with the smooth vessel. Guess what? Do you, do you have the serial number for the watch? Guess what, my friend? I found it. Okay. I, f so I, what is I found the watch. Guess what? I have a receipt who I bought it from, okay? And guess what? It has a serial number, and it's not your serial number. And I have proof who I bought it from, when that I sold it, and we could call the client. I could embarrass you and your dealer that doesn't know shit about watches, too. 
okay? So make sure before you call a reputable company that you know what you're talking about, okay? Because I don't take that very kindly, okay? It's not your watch, and I don't buy stolen watches. I don't care about the scratch because that serial number, you can't remove it from that case. You understand that? That's part of the watch. Okay, so let me tell you something. In good faith, will you change? Would you send me the serial number? In good faith. Who are you for me to send you a, a, a serial number? Listen, you know, you know, Romero Brito is my homeboy. I, 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 I don't care. Know. I don't care if it's, if, if you're friends with freaking Trump. That doesn't matter to me. You would have come and you say, you know what? I had a watch and I had a thing. We'll pull it out the serial know. number and I'll show you to you. When I told her, hold up, is this a 36 millimeter? Right away, she changed the conversation, and she sent me pictures listen. of watches, and she got nervous. She got Bro, listen, wife. listen, this, she's, she's my wife, she okay? Me. She you thought that you wanted to buy a watch. You think this is your real watch, for real? I don't know what to tell you. I'm just going based on what other people are telling me. Who, what, the, the other people that are telling you are not reputable. Call the dealer and tell him to call me, that he told me that for a scratch, that is your watch. Listen, I believe you. I'm not saying that I don't, man. Now, the easiest way I'm speaking to, to the police department and the person that's helping me, because I don't need the money. I just want to get my wife. Listen. Back. But at the end of the day, if you don't give me a serial number for a while... I'm, you're not... Who are you? Call the cops. Tell the cops that you think that CRM Jewelers has to watch and have them call me and come here. I'm not in the business to buy stolen watches or selling stolen watches. I'm willing to give you the serial number. Come with the police officer, please. Get the cops over here. Bring them. And I'll show you, and I'll give him the right documents. Have a good day, sir. Who are you, man? Oh, I call Good to see you. Yeah, I'm gonna teach you today about diamond shapes, um, especially the ones which are trending. Uh, today's trending, uh, trending stones would be ovals, pear shape, radiant cut, and rectangular cushion cut. So anything which is um, rectangular is what's trending right now. Okay, this is a radiant cut. Never heard of radiant. Yes. Yeah, see now, these are the most trending stones right now. Literally everybody um, is buying these for the last, I would say, two years. These stones always existed in the market, but they had no, no liquidity, no, nothing. See. Radiant cut is basically a rectangular stone. So, you know, so, what happens is every time some celebrity wears um, a stone like this, it becomes popular. And it's a trend. It, it's a trend. It's a... If you asked me what would be the difference between this and an emerald cut, emerald cut does not have as many facets as um, a radiant cut. So you would see a difference noticeably uh, to your naked eye in a heartbeat, see? Although this stone is a little bit larger, you see this one is clearer. It's like a mirror, uh, not as many facets. Correct, see, yeah, it's just like more flat facets versus this one that has a lot of different facets, facets. all the way around that, that shine the light differently. So yeah. it's it's more of how it reflects the light. Exactly, so this is like pretty much like transparent looking stone, like a mirror, like I said. This one has a lot of facets on it, so it looks a little bit different. You get lost uh, in it. Yeah, it's like a round stone, but rectangular and it's modified. That's why we call these. Um, rectangular modified brilliant cut stones. What else do you have? Okay, now this next trending stone right now, and believe me, it's universal right now, is a cushion cut stone. So cushion cuts are also trending, and um, what would happen was cushion cuts used to be square modified brilliant. So they were more like a princess cut, but now since the trend is for rectangular stones, we have modified the cushion cut into a rectangular modified cushion. So again, so we are trending more towards the rectangular part. See, again here, look at this stone over here. Should we go to um, another what's trending stone? Yeah, what's another trending okay. stone? So again, keep in mind, our focus today was on rectangularness of a stone. Now this is an oval stone. Look at this one. They're all long and All elongated, elongated shape. shapes. Correct. Yeah. So the oval is two carats, HV is two. The cushion is also two carats. Next trending is a Next trending would be a pear. That's shape. what my friend did. That's correct. I told her to do rounds so they timed this, but she yes. like, I want a pear. But see he was the first one to buy a pear shape and like I said, it's trending right now, so it has changed. Another shape I happen to have right now is a heart shape. Oh one wow. of those custom crazy ones? It is oh, so cute. It's actual heart. It's actual heart. That is so cool. 
Now that's a heart shape. That's a heart shape. How big is that? That's 0 0.70, 70 points, three quarters of a carat. Three quarters of a carat. Let me show you our classic, classic, classic piece over here, which would be a round stone, 3.45 carats. Actually, I just got this. 345. 345. Fancy shapes, let me just educate you uh, right now to our clients, is people always have this thing, oh, fancy shapes are more expensive. No. Rounds are the most expensive stones. All other shapes are less expensive for the same color, same clarity, uh, everything. Because I know these are trending right now, maybe five or 10 years from now, they would not even exist. Like they, they existed for 100 years, but nobody even, we sold one stone in a year when it came to an oval. I never even stocked a stone in my office. But right now I have quite a few selections. So I have one of each. So if a customer needs something, I do have them. If I don't have it, I would source it for you. Um, so of course we need time to source it, but yes, the answer is very yes. Very cool, yeah. very, very yeah. cool. So my buddy Jordan from Freddy's just called me that he has this antique uh, like pendant watch from Patek. We're gonna go check it out. I don't know too much about it, but I know a lot of people, so maybe we can go get him a price on it. Let's go check it out. What's up, Jordan? How you doing? Good, Good to see you. Good to see you again. The Patek you were calling me about, let me yes. see that. Yeah, very rare. I've never seen another one like this before. So this is an estate buy that we got. We believe it is from the late 1800s. Is it working? Have you, have you tested so this, it? This is actually, this is actually still working. It's a working yeah, piece. And this is a Patek Philippe. Um, do, you have a, do you have a number in mind of what you want for it? So I can ask my buddy because I don't know. I don't know too much about vintage, but I have a lot of connections. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I was hoping that you would make me an offer because I honestly have no idea how to price this item right now. Do you mind if I take some pictures of it? Of course you can. Okay, yeah. so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some pictures of it. Listen, all, all I know is what we paid uh, for this. We, we bought it in a lot with other estate pieces. Uh -huh. um, so as long as I can turn a profit, I think I'm okay with it. Okay, perfect. Have you, Charlie, have you seen anything like this I've before? never ever even knew that Protect made pendant watches. Yep, until we uh, got it about six months ago and I had no idea either. <laughs> and it was just part of the lot and you guys were just like, that's interesting. Part of the lot? I mean, it was. Uh, it came with a bunch of other items and of course this was the only one that really interested us. Um, we just made an offer of them not really knowing what we were what we were purchasing. Um, but we see we saw Protect Philippe and we saw a very unique piece that we have never you seen in 50 years go, of being here, so. You can't go wrong. You've yeah. been in business since what year? Uh, since 75. Do some homework, let me call my friend, I'm gonna call Bain, I'm gonna call Steven. Perfect. Some people who work in vintage, maybe even possibly, if it's okay with you, post it on my socials. That's see more if anybody okay with knows us. Yeah, All right, sure. perfect, so I'll go ahead and do that. Awesome, great. All right. Good I'll stuff, man, you. appreciate Thank it. You. Sounds good. Nakam here has known me since I was like 16 years old, and Nakam is, the best person to find these ladies' watches. I need a, I don't know reference number here, so don't kill me, guys. I need a 26 millimeter between 2000 and 2008 yellow gold two-tone ladies champagne dial or stainless. Has to be crispy, tight, you know what I mean? Like something that looks retail Sorry, ready. Guys. Okay, so can you give me, do you have any of these in stock? Do you have? I have one here in stock. Let, me, let me see it, man. I think I have a 79174. 79174. So that aftermarket bezel. It has an yeah. aftermarket type of bezel, but we could convert it. Okay. I, I need I need cheap and I need good price. Uh one time price, no negotiation. Bring them out. This is this is that's this new is original. Reference. This is original. No, this is older. Yeah, that's original. Everything here? Yeah. yeah. Wow, what dial is that? That Two is why don't they make that? The, 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 the mother of pearl. It's like a mother of pearl, but then it has these cuts on the outside of it. So that's called honeycomb. That's called the honeycomb dial? Yeah. Rare, huh? Because I've never even seen this. It's not like super rare, but it's, a, it's different. It's his only on ladies' watches? Yeah, I think so. That's, only on, that's, that's, that's only on ladies' watches, if I Okay, if so this mistaken. might be a little too pricey for the client because the client has a very small budget. Okay. They are trying to pay between six and eight, so if I make $1,000, I'm happy to the store. So it's enough where I can make something, you can make something. So it definitely is going to need to be stainless steel. Yeah. Okay, or a very like old two tone or not a even very like a two tone. Maybe a six nine one seven three like from the nineties. This is a factory. Dial okay, no, he wants to be between two thousand. That's gonna be too too much. What's what's what are we at here? 
We're at seventy five hundred there. Seventy five hundred. That's yeah. room for me to make five hundred bucks. There's no wiggle room on that. We have room on that. Mm-hmm. You have room. For you, so Come on. That's already that's already cheaper on it. You you can't you could do better on that. And we might do like three hundred bucks more. Three hundred bucks more. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's seventy two hundred. So more or less seventy two. On this one? That's a factory dial, yeah. A factory dial. And this yeah, is a very you. nice, clean... Cre- do you have a glove so I can take off some of these? Yeah, so, so if you see on that one, that's going to be a newer reference one. You see the glass is completely different. Okay, so then let's... You know what? A lot of people sell with pictures. I'm going to try something different. Let's try selling with a video. Any specs on this? Box papers, watch only? That's or, watch only, I believe. Watch only. And yeah. what serial is this? It's a Z, so it's an 05, Correct. right? Oh, 2006. 06, okay. So I have this factory diamond dial Z serial, new style clasp. It's around an 06 with a heavy bracelet. You can see here it has absolutely no sag. And then this will be your newer references one, your newer What's references. This, this will be your old. So is this more expensive or cheaper because the, of that, that dial? Because the, the, the thing is, because of the dial, it's probably going to be around the same price, to be honest with you. Okay, and this is aftermarket it's bezel. This is smooth bezel reference? Um, no, I think it's a fluted reference. Will the tag say it? Does it have that four or zero? Does the tag say, let me see, it says... Yeah. It's a zero. Oh, it's a smooth it's reference. It's a smooth, would you be able to throw a smooth back on yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. So this one has a custom diamond bezel, but we could put the smooth bezel back on it. This is going to be a roughly a 2006. So it's a new style bracelet as well, hitting clasp, super jubilee. And then, uh, 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 very, very, very little to no sag on this one. I would say the bracelet in this condition, probably eight and nine out of 10. And then what's this one? All right, so this one, um, so this is a newer reference as well, it's with the hidden clasp, okay? okay? And it's fluted, it's factory dial. And then that one we could do around 5K. What was the price on this diamond though? So, so this we can do nice. 5,900 on this. And then this one, you said how much? And that one, we could do f- for around 5K. So five. reason this one's a little more expensive is this one's got the- uh, The diamond bezel. The diamond bezel. Would it be cheaper if I throw the smooth bezel back on it? Yes. Yeah? yeah? Okay, I already got a video of this one. And how about the oldie? So the oldie, because of that dial, because of the honeycomb, the honeycomb, it's probably gonna be around the same price as these. So between five and six? Correct. Yeah. All right. Let me go ahead and confirm with the client before I start hassling you and haggling with your prices. And I'm gonna go ahead and call the client, show him the options, see if he likes them. Okay, let's go see what else we can find, guys. All right, guys, Thank always you. a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. You came in here so excited and no, you happy to see. I, you know, I see the stuff and I was you like, You gotta show this to Charlie. What's oh, up? so this is part of my collection? Damn, man, you got a nice collection here. That's what people say, that's but what I saying. think it's just okay. <laughs> that's my grandfather's watch oh, given to my father, given to me. I think that's a Seamaster yeah, from the 60s. And then that's from the 80s, my grandfather. Very nice. I like that you kept your grandfather's watches. That's very important. So the grandfather's watch, which one is it here? Oh, the, these two, the if you can't tell. <laughs> the older watches. The older watches, very nice. Do you ever wear them? Or they're more sentimental, so you're scared? I do. Actually, oh, you do wear them, awesome. I, I wear my grand. I, you know what's funny? It's, it's weird because because all of my Rolexes are more modern, so they're bigger. But the Omega, even though it's a, I think it's a 34 or a 34, I still wear that one. But I don't wear the 36 Rolex. Why, because it's just the case proportion? Or you it just feels the, weird. It feels weird compared to all of my other Rolexes. It was like, that feels yeah, right. Yeah, very nice. See, that feels right. How long have you been collecting watches for, though? 20 years. You can't wear years? that in LA anymore. No? That's so unfortunate that you're... LA is pretty, like, you know, like, because like, you're supposed to feel Third world safe. country vibes You're supposed to feel <laughs> safe in Beverly Hills, right? But you don't, you don't feel safe. 
so unfortunate. So it is unfortunate. So you have to wear the watches in your house, then, pretty much. No, I have, I wear like an Apple Watch when I go nice. But I'm late. saying your nice watch, you have to you have to wear them in yes. your house. it's it's in house or house parties or when you're fe seeing friends. I will say I, I feel safe at the golf course. That's cool. I, I'm not into Bradley, but that's very cool. This is a this I, I picked up a long. Look how heavy this thing is. It, it went, this is my Miami watch. This is your Miami watch? <laughs> yes. Very shiny. It's Whoa. the shiniest. Whoa. Whoa, high polish everywhere. So a lot of people call this a Prezi, and while they're not wrong, you're technically not right. This here is a Rolex Day Date with a President bracelet. Prezi for short. This started because Lyndon B. Johnson used to rock this Day Date with the President bracelet and it became known as a Rolex presidential band. Now, not all day dates are prezzies. They do make some 36s that are day dates on oyster bracelets. And prior to 2009, the largest size day date you can get was a 36 millimeter. So right here, I have this very special watch. And this is a special piece to me because I remember my dad rocking this when I was maybe five, six years old. This here is a masterpiece. What a masterpiece is, is the highest end version of a Rolex Day Date that was made. This has this very special high polish bracelet with these three piece links that is kind of like an oyster bracelet in a way, but the watch is a 39 millimeter. So back then, prior, like I said, to 2009 when the Day Date 2 came out, this is what was the largest watch. And you know, people used to rock 36s all the time, but now it's considered a lady size. It's crazy to think that this was considered a huge watch. I think this fits perfectly on the wrist. What do you think about that? Do you think that Rolex is gonna go back to 39 millimeters or do you think that they found the right size with the Day-Date 40? I like the Day-Date 40 over the 41. I think it's more refined. So you have two extremists of people who wear watches. You have people like my father Carlos who wears a watch for 15 minutes. The watch could be brand new and it looks like it went to World War One, Two, Three, Vietnam and like combat four or five, six times. Then you have people like my client that I sold this 59.90 to exactly a year ago and there's not a single scratch on it and he wears the watch. So I'm not saying you have to beat up your watches but you have to wear them. But this is how you take care of a watch. Look at that. This watch is pristine, flawless, $59.90. If you guys remember, I purchased this in Boston when my dad was in Bahamas in probably CRM episode like eight, nine. So it's been a while already. Beautiful piece. I love to see when my clients come back in with the pieces that I sold them. But he bought something very special for me and he didn't want to come on a camera, but I was super excited once he brought this out. Chronometer blue. This chronometer blue, if you see it's black in certain angles, it's royal blue in other angles. If I am not mistaken, I had the first time I saw this, they gave me the quick lesson on it. There's a 20% success rate when they're making these dials. So for every 10 dials they make, only two come out right and they discard and throw away the rest. It is crazy the shades of blue on this. I've had a picture of this watch saved on my phone maybe about three or four years. I love Jorn. I think they are the new direction. Look at that movement. Now I know my dad says Patek is the boss and Patek is top game, but let's compare this Patek movement to this Jorn movement. Patek is beautiful, but nothing like a Jorn. And this last one, I am not too familiar with it. I know what Grebo Force is. It's a very amazing brand. Um, when I was 17, I actually posted one of their watches, one of their GMT watches on my Instagram. And they are, is Grebel Force the independent watch maker? Yes. So Grebel Force. Only 100 watches a year. So only 100 watches a year. Look at this. Whoa, wait, what? The hands, if you look at it here at an angle, the hands are curved. The whole movement is curved. You have this, is it Turbion? Turbion sitting there at an angle? Balance wheel turbion. Look at that. Extremely light. I believe it's titanium. Look at that back of that case. Serial number? Yeah, wait, 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 wait. I'm hiding that serial number right there. I guess you like white straps, huh? 
What is market value on this Gerbil 4 sheet? Mm. Approximately. Well, the fact there's only nine, I'd say 275 to three. So in the two to 300,000 range. Honestly, I feel better than a Richard Mill on my wrist. That I do like Richard Mill, I do like the materials, but if I was gonna spend upwards of a hundred thousand, I I think I'm gonna stick away from the normal brands. My only normal brand that I'm true to is Rolex, even though this is custom, but Rolex is perfection and everything else to me. I like the oddballs, I like the underdogs, Jorns, Grebel 4C. I love Patek, I love AP. But this is so cool. This is just another level of cool.